Hello, welcome to Footprint. My name is Samuel Atamensa. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll be getting into the real conversation with the man on the block for this episode. Welcome once again. Born and bred in Edum Kumasi, Wing Commander Patrick Nelson Sokbojo had his secondary education at Achimoto School in Accra. Wing Commander Sokbojo is a retired Air Force officer and a pilot. He was sent for training in Italy under Kwame Nkrumah and was one of the first Ghanaians to be trained to fly a fighter jet. Wing Commander Patrick Nelson Sokbojo tells the rest of his story on footprints now welcome back this is still footprints on city tv and as you now know i have with me wing commander patrick sobojo papa it's good to see you nice seeing you too it's been it's been a while but you are looking well i must say it could be deceptive <laughs> <laughs> but but it's not. I mean, you are you are you are looking well. In um, you know. uh, you've always been, uh, you know, a soldier at heart, and everything you do, your discipline, and and all the things you've done. Um, so we, we we thought it wise to to catch up with you for you to walk us through your own footprints. Um, we 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 will learn a thing or two I, that I can assure our viewers. Um, so, so um, Wing Commander Patrick Sogbojo, that's the, the rank with, at which you retired from? Yes, I retired as a Wing Commander. Now tell me, what, how, what, 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 how, what's the, how do we graduate? Where do we start from and where do you end in the Air Force? In the Air Force, you start as a pilot officer. You come to flying officer, then fly lieutenant, then squadron leader then wing commander, then group captain, then air commodore, then air vice marshal, the marshal of the air force. Where's That's the topmost rank? Marshal of the air force. Okay, okay, do, we, do we, we? We had one, um, Otu. Otu. Air marshal Otu. Air marshal Otu, yeah, yes. who passed away. Who passed away, yes. Some time ago. yes. Wow. And then um, got crashed when we were taking the body yeah. back to um, a Dukrum. Yes. That's correct. Yes. That's correct. Wow. That's how we had. But at, time, at that time, you were, you were no more in the service. At that time, I think I would just come out. Come out, yeah. But I was there when a helicopter took off to go to a And there was a crash. And there was the a body. crash. There was a crash before where they intended to have landed. They changed it to a school park, which was marked. But they forgot that that place was very dusty. Oh. So when the airplane was going down, the dust Took over. started coming into the intake. Oh. And the dust into any jet engine, you flame out. Flame out is that you cut off the engine. Wow. So we believe that's what happened to the airplane. The dust coming from the ground entered the What happened intake. to the pilots then? They did very well, extremely very well. Remember we were able them? to use yeah, there are one became an air force, Air Marshal Nagai. Nagai. Yes, yeah. he was the captain. Mm -hmm. He was the mm -hmm. captain at that time. Wow, yes. he did well. Mm. Uh, he caught plane, and but they were able to salvage the cops mm -hmm. for rebarrier. You know, wow, later. that's a story. So, your whole air force journey, where did it start from? The idea of getting into the Air Force? Well, I joined the cadet corps in Achimoto School. Oh, and you we went to Achimoto School? Yes, I did. I, and I, then we used to do camping. And my father had taken me once from Takradi to Accra on an airplane. And I developed an interest in becoming maybe a pilot. Was your father a pilot too? No, my father was an accountant with the white folks, J. Lyles. You know, and there were a couple of old Achimotans who had graduated already as pilots and some in training. So this actually boosted my morale. I used to go to them on the weekends 
And you used to look, base. see them, Air Force Base, see them, these small planes going up and down. So I swore I will be one one day. So after Achimata School, in fact, my year group, I think, provided about 18 officers. Out of? Out of our set. Mm. We joined the military. We wow. had some few of them, General Smith, a whole lot of them who joined. But I opted to go to the Air Force. Mm -hmm. And uh, the training starts at a grading level where they send you out there to check whether you can, you can be a pilot. They check your aptitude, the attitude, and everything. And I passed through. Mm -hmm. So at the age of maybe 17, I'm able to fly an aeroplane all by myself. At age 17? 17 as a pilot. And once I took off, went and came back and landed, I've more or less passed my private pilot license. Wow. And then the Air Force thought I was as a good student. So But you're not afraid? No. no. What was your motivation that you used to you used to watch war 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 films? Those we didn't have televisions. Our televisions were not the black and white movies are not even come yet. Ah, you, you, know, you used to watch them on Chingon Photo, you know no, Chingon. We photo. actually see them, they overfly the house. Now we need this were student flying. There's a tiny uh, chipmunk aircraft and so forth, you know. And they were quite exciting to see them going and then coming in. And um, I think your first two hours, you're a bit afraid. Mm -hmm. That's why they take you up and do all kind of maneuvers with the airplane, watching your, your reaction. reaction yeah. you know, but once I knew I was with an instructor, and the instructor didn't want to die. And it was white <laughs> folks at the time. So, you know, they were white folks. Yeah. There were a couple of Ghanaian group captain Jackson, who became a minister and a champion time. There were a couple of them, Kote, Junior Kote. They were all instructors at that time. Okay. Which Kote? Is it the first? Uh, James. Who? Okay, different from? Yes, his younger brother. Oh, Robert okay. was the Army Commander. Army Commander, yeah. Then James became the Air Force Commander. Wow. Robert was killed, mm -hmm. shot alongside Champo and the rest. Exactly. But James died in natural causes. Wow. So tell me, you, you were born, were you born in Accra? No, sir. I was born and bred in Kumasi, Edum. Edum? Of all places. Edum of all places? Yes. But, yes. but, but you, you, are you Ashanti, like, in terms of I ethnicity? Are, I am more Ashanti outlook, inside, and everything. Culturally, up, yeah. Culturally, I'm more embedded, even though I've been stored as the in Koswahini or Manoyam, for Adan, for this area, but mm -hmm. I am more Ashanti in. Because mm -hmm. my siblings were born and bred in Kumasi. Kumasi. Yes. But some, for, for you to be born in Kumasi within that period, Edum, the period you talk about, everything in Kumasi was happening in Edum. Yeah, Edum was center of Kumasi. Like you said, everything was in Edum. The two banks they had in Kumasi, Barclays, Barclays and, Standard and Standard, were in Edum. Mm -hmm. The two good hotels, Hotel the Kingsway hotel and the Ricardo, Kingsway. were in the Doom. <laughs> the post office was in the Doom. And Kingsway too. Kings, all the shots in the Doom. Wow. But you had to be tough to come into a Doom because if you are not tough, you can't. Why is that? Because it was like what I see in Rio de Janeiro where they have youthful guns fighting among themselves and robbing people and so forth. You, know. you had gangs there? Well, we used what you call jackknife. Jackknife for brick bottles. Or old copy knife which you could buy. And this we learned from the soldiers who came back from the Second World War. Mm -hmm. You know, they usually came by sea to Takurade. And then they are brought down in caboose van. I'm not too sure if you know why it's called caboose. No, I don't. Caboose vans are the ray vans, not the passenger ones. You know, uh, they, they freight trains for other cattle or whatever you could put in, and it's locked with the sergeant major with his rifle at the door so that you couldn't escape. Because they came back from the war and they have not been demobbed, meaning that they have not been demobilized to leave the military. Mm -hmm. So they must still be intact until they were delivered to the barracks in Kumasi. It was from Kumasi that they started the mobilization mm -hmm. in batches. 
And of course, after four or five years in war, and they came to Odum, and the, the Red District in Ghana, the, the, the headquarters, was in Odum. Red District? Yes, as the Red District What's means that? That where they had women, they could come and have fun and go back. And I'm sure a lot of people do not understand the word when they say a woman is two two. No, two two. Two two. In 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 the Akan lingua. Akan guy everything. When they say you are two yeah, two, 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 two. It means, it means yeah, you are you know prostitution, what I mean? yeah. Prostitute. And and that is how much they paid oh. to have sex, maybe one round or whatever they did. With a oh, prostitute. Two, two what, shillings. Two shillings. So per they're woman. two per woman. For so if one you have act. three women, you pay six. Then different women. You pay one, two shillings. If you have enough strength, you go for another one, two shillings. Oh, okay. So each entrance, each do was two shillings. So that's where the two, two came that's from. That's where the two, two Good name came, which is used throughout the country. When they say, oh, this one's a two, two woman, it means she's a semi-prostitute or full-time. <laughs> <laughs> I like the semi bit. <laughs> yes. Some have been called. There were times they brought the younger ones for training. Wow. And then they were mm. all happy days for us when they brought the younger ones to be trained. Mm -hmm. Before they grow up and they can get their own cubicles. Oh, they had cubicles? Yes. There are two, two, you go into a cubicle. Hey. You know, small, small rooms. That's why you go. No windows? The man comes in, in heat. He doesn't <laughs> care whether it's a, it's a windy or not. And most of them were were soldiers at that time. Mm -hmm. And they came like on exit. All right. But they come in their companies. Company A will come up maybe from 9 o'clock to about 11. Then Bravo, which is B, is coming from 12 to about 2. Mm. Then Charlie, C, is coming from maybe 2 to 4. Mm -hmm. But there were times of overlapping. Yeah. You know, yeah. some yeah. of them would believe to go and have appetition. I don't I didn't know at that time they thought if you drank a little bit, you became more manly. Mm -hmm. So maybe instead of going there early, they don't. Then the other one will come. Then become a clash. Some of them identified their preferences, the women there. Wow. So if you go in, you don't get that early, the other guy is coming. <laughs> then it becomes a fight. Wow. And so uh, this is happening in the doom. Yeah, that's all in the doom. Then they had knives. Mm -hmm. A part of the addressing code. And when they are fighting, they sometimes drew knives. Wow. So we, the young ones, also learn how to break bottles mm -hmm. to protect ourselves. And of course, we are not going to secondary school. So a friend would take a bottle and then, and what they call chook, yeah, you know, somebody. inject the bottle. And sometimes the intestines are coming out. Hey. And they will shout, Piyashim. Be ashamed. So you put back your intestine and they take a cloth and rush you to the European hospital. So that made the boys in the doing boisterous. Oh yeah. Very boisterous. <laughs> and you grew up there without yes. doing pian shame for anybody. Unfortunately, I didn't get that. Because I had my own team who backed me up. Wow. If I had I was a gang a gang leader, a junior gang leader. So you, you won't dare raise a fight with me. But I wasn't that troublesome to look for a fight. Okay. And your parents knew that? Yes. My parents knew that. It happened. The fight between NLM and CPP. Those who work in the mines, Konongo and Obuasi, were still dynamites. They're jelly, jelly night dynamite, dynamite mm -hmm. you know, they still them. And we. I developed friendship with people who live in Asantini town and Makum and so forth. So when they gave you a house to be dynamited, you go around and play with the boys who were there. And they will go and place this <laughs> dynamite somewhere. Then in the evening, about between six and seven, the other ones will go and put the, the device which will explode it. But in the meantime, we are going home. I've been paid two shillings. Good money. Hmm. Then they will blast the house late in the evening. And this went on for a while. 
Ah, come on. It's a violent. We haven't seen that kind of violence in Ghana. What went on in Kumasi? Really? But the question whether my father knew was at that time, Kumasi had, was more or less an NLM district. Mm -hmm. But in 1956 election, they are dead Kwame Nkrumah, if you could come to Kumasi for the election. That means that the CPP were having election in Subin Valley, where they vice a Santini town, where the NLM warriors were, and then the other side of uh, Kumasi. We were called in. I was called to get some of the boys. And our briefing was that Kwame Nkrumah was going to come by train. Because I think the NLM, NLM suspected that he was going to come by road. So they have set up ambushes from the town from Apidra, where they will stop the convoy and kill him. Apidra in the eastern region? Yes. Apidra in the east. So you, if you are going by road, you go through Apidra. Definitely. And kill Kwame Nkrumah. But I think their intelligence picked it up. So they made him come to Kumasi by train. So that eluded the plans they had to execute him. But in Kumasi, our job was that when the train arrived, we were to form a ring protection ring around Kwame Nkrumah. At this, at this time, you still hadn't gone to secondary no, school? No, I must have been about 12, 13. I hadn't gone yet. We were to form the bodyguard and walk in. The railway station and Subin Bala was not. Oh, yeah, that. next time, yeah. So we walked, formed a ring around him, protected him until he got onto the stage. And when they announced his arrival in Kumasi, the whole place went have gone. The NLM warriors who were on the hill waiting for fire their gunshot, they were, they were shocked and they ran off. Our job completed on his return to Accra, they, they had a feeling that he was going to take a train from Accra, Kumasi, back to Accra. And this time, they changed their plan. He took from Kumasi to Takuradi. So people they put in the train maybe to lynch him, he wasn't on Accra bound train, he was in Takuradi bound. He got to Huni Valley, then he joined Accra bound one. So he still evaded um, <laughs> the NLM group. And as wow. a result, CPP was able to capture, Kumasi had only four seats, he captured two, and NLM, NLM got two. two. So tell me, which primary school did you attend in Kumasi? Or elementary school? As we say? I did the primary in a Doom Presbyterian school. I did part of middle in Government Boys School. Asim, which is called Asim Gold Boys, yes. Asim mm -hmm. Boys, yes. So I left Asim Boys to Achimote School. So that must be midstream? Yes. So you wrote the entrance examination entrance, yes. at some point. Mm -hmm. And you left your, your, your cruise. Well, I'll tell you what the Doom chief said. That's, uh, that let him go. He will not last one term. He'll, he'll bring him back. <laughs> you know what? You, 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 so, you are so grounded in yes, the Doom. Yes, yes, yes. The man about yes, town. Yes. And there were traders but and shops yes, coming everything up. Everything was in the Doom. Mm. And I was talking about the Red District. You know, they changed the mode of dressing with Ashanti at that time was on Tuma. Mm -hmm. But we had the Liberian and the Cyrillian women who came to settle in the doom and they didn't do the cubicle 221. Mm -hmm. They dressed up like European or American and they hung around Hotel the Kingsway, the post office, then the European club and the, the, most of their customers were Europeans. So their dressing mode start changing the way the women start discarding the ntoma and wearing Western clothes. Mm. So they will call them Bobby Stand. I don't know whether you heard the name, Bobby Stand. You know, we hear <laughs> these things without knowing the, the So background. now you know what his tutu is about. Yeah. The Bobby Stand that he tells the customer, look, I'm young. 
Uh-huh. My boob is standing up. Okay. I may show part of it. That's called Bobby Star. And they oh, charge okay. one pound one pound plus. So they were more expensive. More expensive, about so, ten times expensive. So they were the providing premium service. Yes. Bobby stand. Bobby stand. Premium service. Premium service yes. On this Bobby stand <laughs> note, we'll take a break. And when we come back, we'll go on, move away from a room because it's becoming too hot. <laughs> this is footprints. <laughs> Welcome back. This is Footprint, and I'm here with Wing Commander Patrick Sobojo. So we, being in Kumase Elementary School, and, and in those days, elementary school, as we used to see, middle school, we, they, were, we, they looked like adults, <laughs> you know. And so yeah. you, you, you must have been uh, conscious of the political environment. Certainly, I was. Mm -hmm. What were your own experiences with the Nkrumah government at the time? Well, we had not achieved independence, independence yet. yet. Okay. I knew that there was an election in 1954, mm -hmm. and instead of another four years, which would have taken us in 58, we were to get our independence around right about 55, 56. But I think what we learned was that. The last election was said that Nkrumah didn't win um, from geographical. He won the south and some areas up middle and then the north. So if Nkrumah wanted an independence, then they should go back to elections, which I think the CPP protested because it wasn't fair. Because in the British system, it's four years, four years. But after two years, they shouldn't go back to another election. But because Nkrumah wanted election, and the NLM wanted a federation, a federation that was, they are called Martin Mehu. Martin Mehu is free. Gokus. Because at that time, Ashanti region was perceived to be the richest in the country. Later, we know that Western region had everything that Shanti region had in triples, but it had not been explored. But this went on until the independence came. And even after independence, the first two years, NLM was still very violent and strong in Kumasi. So to thwart what they could do, you know, had cold football were played among the suburbs. So we developed friendship in almost every area. And the gangs we had was to dig for information and filter. When you came to Adum, majority of the Ashanti chiefs had their palaces in Adum. I think had, Kumasi grew out of Adum. So it was very easy for one chief's palace to get information about what the intention were. Because mm -hmm. the chiefs were the NLM. So these information we got, then it's passed on to James Owusu, Jira, who were strong CPP element. So the intelligence on CPP was strong, mm -hmm. very strong. So you use the juvenile football, with the yes, cold yes, football? Yes, yes, to, yes, to, to advance to the other areas. Mm -hmm. And the major areas for the NLM were basically Asante Newtown and Amakum. Very strong. Very strong. Because of course, Mencia was there, so... Um, mm -hmm. They're very strong. But other areas are Doom, Bantama, and the rest was a CPP. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Kumasi was almost even. Okay. But you, you obviously were CPP for yes. at that age. Yes. Yes. We became CPP because Archie Kisley Hayford, mm -hmm. who became a minister of education, I believe, in the first government, had lived in Kumasi and lived in the Doom. And his son, Betty Kessel Hayford, who I believe his company brought traffic light into, into Gold Coast and into Ghana. And the British council was next door to them. Up there. Up there, yes. Near Ramsaya, you mm -hmm. know. Right. And they used to show films. So when they were showing educative and other films, all the children in the doom, especially in Kruline, the area where I said the librarians and they called our police crew. We oh, yeah. always trooped to go and watch a film show. 
And after that, you, you get some little chocolates or toffees. So we all grew up interest in supporting our chickens to hear for who was a CPP. Even though behind him was um, another very strong NLM, even a classmate of Nkuma and Achimote School, who was just behind, but of course, we were more than what he had yeah. at that time. Mm. So this was um, until you Before went I entered Achimote, Achimote School. School. Which year did you enter Achimote School? 59, 1959. Young Kumasi boy comes to Achimote School, but he had a wealthy father. Yes, well, I wouldn't say well he was all right. He was a well-to-do man, yes. So you didn't go to Achimota School a, a poor boy? One thing about Achimota School, whether you came with money, you didn't, our motto is, Ut Omnes Saint, let us all be one. Achimota reduced you the same level. But they like laughing at people. You couldn't, and because basically, you're all students. You come in, you are not allowed to wear home clothes. You wear mm. school uniform. Except the girls on Sundays are allowed to put on something different. So the fact that I am in school, and you also came from somewhere, you are not better than me. Mm -hmm. you know, so the quality thing in Archmoto was very strong. Good. You know. The only thing sometimes your father had a car, which would come to the compound on next their days. They brought you food. But you don't eat the food alone. You eat with your friends. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't see any sound of, in my house, anybody being laughed at because your father didn't have a bicycle or had a car. It didn't exist in Achimota School. Okay. It never existed. Who are some of your mates you entered Achimota School with that you still remember? Still in uh, maybe public Reverend, life? Reverend Josai, Reverend Stella Benciencho, the, the lawyer, right? Yes. The lawyer. The lawyer. Mm -hmm. Brigadier General Wanhwani, who is the BCO of 37, and mm -hmm. a lot of them. Wanhwani, Indian. Yes. Half Indian. Yeah. Half Ghanaian. Mm. Yeah, Ghanaian. And um, some of them went into politics. Of course, Josai did. Josai, I did. I think he's the only one, and maybe myself, who had a stint in politics. Mm -hmm. you know. But at Chimote School, as he said, grounded you and reformed you into it was more like a military school because most of the teachers who were there at that time in fact my tenure in the school Ghanaian on staff i'm not talking about those who work in the kitchen and the rest they were not more than four they were all british ex-servicemen who had gone through the war and came back so the school the constitution and the school bylaws were almost like you were in a military camp. So you, you were falling. You can't, you know, and, and it was difficult to. I didn't see any student being sacked for misbehaving. Mm -hmm. I knew a couple of them who were asked because you were not too good in classrooms. They can repeat you one year, they don't repeat you twice. The second time, if, they were let to leave the school. Mm -hmm. But I didn't see anyone who misbehaved so badly that I had to be sacked from the school. Mm -hmm. I didn't. So five years in Achimoto School? After five years in Achimoto School then, I told you I joined the Cadet Corps, mm -hmm. and uh, I had a little trip into the Air Force, and the Air Force accepted me. But the five years in Achimoto School, what would be some of your fondest memories? Something that happened that you would never forget. Or something that happened that you forever regret. Second regret, school. regret, no. Um, they were fun. I mean, those days, if you were in Achimota school, we didn't have... Were you Achimota, a sportsman? Yes. Yes. I ran for the school. I did hurdles. You ran? Yes. And you played? And that took me. I played soccer. But the athletics took me to Nigeria, games with King's College. Wow. So Achimota was not part of Ministry of Education. Achimota time. was on his own. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, before Ministry of Education took over the rest of the schools. Achimota was brought into education during a champion time in 1975. But to me, I think that was a mistake they did. Mm. If they thought Achimota's school was classic, what the government could have done 
was to take the original 10 secondary schools, what we call intercolleges, mm -hmm. and then brought them up to the level of what Achimota was. I'm not talking of academics. Academics and then the social conditions in the school. Mm -hmm. So at a certain time in the 80s, where I have 10 schools who were as good, the same level of Achimota school. Then they will look at another 10 mm -hmm. and also bring them up. Okay. To so that. You, so you, to get to a time, Achimota, it will be the same. Should have become the benchmark. The benchmark for mm -hmm. the behavior and occasional pattern in secondary schools. Mm -hmm. Achimota started also the University of Ghana, Ghana, started University of Kumasi and Cape Coast. And to win it back to a certain extent, but it could have become a benchmark. I am not saying that education was the best, but the behavior pattern in Achimota was struck that even on holidays, if you want to mess up during holidays, you came back to school, you will get into trouble. So you think the, the social constructs of the school itself uh, provided so much value that could yes, have been replicated yes, yes, by... Yes, it did. Um, it did. It did. You don't think that's... Uh, and I don't dispute that. Um, you've had products from Achimota, some uh, rising up to become heads of states, and they carried that same social values? Yes. It's a training mm. we got from Achimota School, whether you were from the north, south, east, and west. As captured by your, your yes. school old. Yes, school old caught you up. You they remember didn't give the preferences. Remember that you, you still sing it? Yes. I remember them. There are a few couple of songs. Until the national anthem was composed in Achimota School hmm. by Beho. Yeah. Okay, so Achimota School from um, um, which year again did you enter? 59, 59 to, 63. to 63. Then you left and then joined the Air Force. Air Force yes. Now, what process actually took you into the Air Force? You have to write an, an, an entrance exam, so you applied? What, uh, yes, they had, they, we don't have entrance, you applied. You applied, you went to the interview, you were graded. And then if you find it suitable, mm -hmm. they accepted you. But I must say, because of the cadet corps we had in Achimota School, and that cadet corps always represented the cadet corps in the country. Like the Queen was coming, we have to go to that. Initially, the parades were held at the Crossport Stadium before Blaster Square was built. And when the Queen was coming, they brought in senior NCO drill sergeants to come and bring us up for the parade, you know. So we could go through the exam, not the exam, the physical and the rest easy. Mm -hmm. And because of the background, we're easily accepted into the military. Okay, how many of you from Achimota at the time? I think in my year ago, about 18 of us. 18? Yes. Some, even though they passed, the A level or O level had not come out. So when the results came out, they didn't come to report. They went back to school. Oh, okay. But I had that time had gone to fly in Takrani, and there was no way the Air Force would let me go. Okay. You know, and I'm a young boy pilot. I was happy. <laughs> I stayed into the annoyance of my father. Wow. So you got into the Air Force at the time as, um, as an, uh, what? a flight cadet. Flight cadet. Again, so remember your cohort, the group you started with. When you start a flight cadet, you have Army cadet, Naval cadets. Basically, no matter the branch you want to go, you must do the military training what we call the boot camp. The boot camp, unfortunately, I've done service with Italian, with the British and Americans. They are virtually the same thing. This is where they reduce you to your level. <laughs> you know, for example, the first eight weeks, you are not allowed to walk. If my room was next to the toilet, I can't walk to the toilet. I must always You're be trotting. Always be running. On the trot. And one day my mother came there to visit. <laughs> and as she sat down and they called me in, I was talking to my mother whilst I was, I was joking. And I saw tears coming down her eyes. 
Why? She didn't like it. How could you be talking to your mother and you are trotting? <laughs> you couldn't stand. There's, there's heat there. Yeah, you can't. <laughs> because you have not gone past the basic eight weeks. Where we call it, you have to pass off the square. Where okay. they set all of this, you march in your blazer. You look at your marching and say, you're okay. You can go into town. It means from that day, you can walk. If you fail three times, they'll throw you out. Wow. And you come out in your blazer and your flannel trousers. And you are proud to walk in the streets of Accra as a cadet. So first, um, was it eight weeks? Eight weeks. After that, you start the normal military training. Okay. The military training... And this was in Accra or Takrade? Teshin. Okay. In Teshin. If even you came in as a professional, a doctor, a lawyer, whatever educational background you had, you will still do the military training. Because if they don't, you don't go to the boot camp, you can't blend. And if you're a doctor, you must know I'm a doctor, a soldier and a doctor. I am a nurse and a doctor. That's the way it is. You go through the military training for the eight weeks. And I tell you, not that many people come out at the eight weeks not wanting to be in the military. Mm. Because your body starts getting tuned up. You know, for example, eight like weeks. eight weeks. They make you jump from a moving vehicle. You oh, know, yeah. <laughs> you, you, you enjoy it. You enjoy jumping yes. from a moving vehicle? Yeah, you will. You have to walk from a brewery to Teshi in the night. In the night. With jungle, you, we call it jungle map. They have your compass, and you have to navigate yourself through the forest. A bury. A bury. A bury. But these be. days it's easy because people have built they around. Built. Those days it was bush. It was bush. You had three times to do it. If you third time, you can't it's okay. Hey. Well, this is but no I easy think way. I think in most countries where they are doing well, they all had the national service. Yeah. The national service, you do it in the military. And we're saying that if they allow our students either to do the national service six months in the boot camp or after they finish six months, we will have a lot of discipline. Six months? But you did eight uh, six weeks. weeks. Six eight weeks. Eight weeks, yeah, yeah six weeks. Yeah. We'll have a lot of discipline. I mean, even one month will make you know, a difference. Okay, so you now. Well, maybe that's, the national service that's, people can now take a cue from this one. And, well, and they, then, what various government has said, they didn't have enough money to equip the national student coming. But one thing they forgot, you don't have to equip a national student doing national service as a regular soldier. Yeah. What they need to do is just inculcate the discipline into themselves. You think that would have helped? It helps. Because majority of Countries you know which are done well have the national service. You have to do national service. Wow. And national service, if you're posting you to any village, you won't say I won't go. That's true. Because you've been trained even to live in the bush. Eight weeks of military, yeah, military training, training for national will service change you. people. Will change because these days the national service for a lot of them, they go they go to work, there's nothing yes. happening. And they go, they go and do Facebook <laughs> and Twitter. You know, <laughs> Are you on it, Twitter? I on Twitter. It's, it, it, it softens you mm -hmm. when it comes out after eight weeks. You wow. be soft. Good. And then you enter the academy proper. Then you enter the academy proper. For academy started one year, two years. Our period was two years. Okay. But I did six months there, almost a year, and I went to Italy. How how come? We were selected. The Ghana Air Force was set out to do transportation. They had transport aircraft. They didn't have a defense aircraft to defend the country in the air, sea, and land. Okay. So Nkrumah thought, no, we should have the jet fighters. So they bought an Italian trainer jet fighter, Maki. And part of the deal was that they should train 12 of us. So I think they selected the best 12 they had. Unfortunately, that was one. Mm -hmm. So we went to Italy for a year and a half to be trained and qualified as pilots. Then you go to the military 
not a military, it's a military school. Mm -hmm. You go to the fighting squadron where they teach you how to drop bombs, fire, fight in the air, or on the ground of the aircraft. Hey. Then so, you become a fighter pilot. Wow. So, six months into your training, you were selected to be part of those to be the, trained to be in Italy. In Italy yes. and, and so, you eventually went to Italy and, and completed. The whole the, course was done in Italian. Oh, not English? No, 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 no. Right, maybe the first two is a little English, but they decided to do everything in Italian. Because they had Italian pilots who didn't speak. English. But flying language is English. Okay. So we alternate it. Okay. But, but, but you, didn't, you didn't know a word in Italian. So. We had to learn. We had to learn by every evening compulsory go to the television room. Then the commandant of our school, the wife spoke English. She would take us on sometimes in the afternoon. You know. But as to the technical words, mm -hmm. In, in aviation, basically they are English translated, so you can know that it is what. But when you live in anywhere where you don't speak the language, among the people, I bet you within three or four minutes we start speaking. speaking yeah. But that is the only thing you hear. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yes. So you managed to do that. Yeah, we we'll managed to do that. I started speaking fluent completed. Italian. Good. Okay, so this is Wing Commander Sobojo telling us how he was airlifted <laughs> as a pilot, trainee pilot from Ghana to Italy and completing his journey. We'll take a short break and then we'll find out how he, he was actually, um, is this the word conscripted? Mm -hmm. what? Conscription word, when you go out and arrest people, like the young, young men. Oh, really? Oh, they arrest you, consult you, you know, strict. Okay. And there's some more during the war time when they needed soldiers. That's the conscription. Yes, the okay. Conscription, so yes. how you enlistment. were... Enlistment. Enlistment. Enlistment is when you go on your own. Good. You were right. enlisted. So now how you were enlisted. Yes. So how you was eventually enlisted. enlisted. <laughs> so we'll take this break. When we come back, we'll continue from there. Welcome back. This is Footprint with Wink Commander Sobojo. So, Commander, you, you, you finished, uh, completed um, your training in Italy. And um, in Italy... How many Ghanaians? Twelve. All of About you 12. came back. Yes, we did. Um, and you met other um, people from other African countries. I'll tell on that the program. truth. We were the first Africans south of the Sahara to fly jet fighters. Oh, really? And you were all Ghana. males. Yes, all males. Mm. Fighting fighter training is is not easy, but it's not because of that. We're all male, and we're first south of the Sahara. Oh, there are no Nigerians there? No, we got jet fighters before Nigeria. Oh, I see. Yes. Wow. So you were the first? The first south of the Sahara. Mm -hmm. And in Ghana, you were the first batch? The first batch on fighter planes. Wow. There were other made pilots, but mostly transport, transport logistics, and helicopter yeah. logistics. But we, the first batch in fighter squadron. Then you were wild guys. <laughs> the men about town. <laughs> yes, we're strong. The but the training is extremely difficult. The normal pilot training is what everybody does. We did it with Alitalia students. Okay. Mm -hmm. But after a while, they leave. Okay. The Cordias is take off and land, take off and land. But we have to go in and learn more about airplane on aviation. So in the world at the moment, let's say United States, about 60% of their pilots flying the civil planes are from ex US Air Force. Mm. They are more trained and they are more disciplined, disciplined in the cockpit mm -hmm. than the young ones who come in straight from the, the small, small schools yeah. to come up here. Wow. Yeah. So when you came back to Ghana, uh, which year would this be? We came in, as a matter of fact, by the end of, towards the end of 1965, we had not finish our fighter training. But there were two, two pilots who had been made here already who were sent up. And the OAU meeting was coming up. And Nkrumah was determined to show the rest of African countries that Ghana has got fighter planes. So they were brought down. 
they were brought down before we came. And what they did was doing escort duties. So when the planes, if a head of state is coming, if you're coming from the eastern side, maybe they'll meet you around other area and fly close up with you until you landed. And once the plane landed, we will just move up and do aerobatics. At that time, maybe the head of state is being escorted to inspect the guard of honor. And by the time he finished, he would have landed and a Land Rover or a 4x4 would have picked us from Kruman to introduce mm -hmm. us to the other African heads of states. No, you were a wild guy. And, and to be honest with you, a lot of them were surprised. Yeah. That you, in fact, a history, at one time in, in Italy, I was doing formation flight. That means that you have about six airplanes, three here and three there. And when we landed, one is they marshal you to come stop. You park your airplane. I think I was the fifth coming in. And when they marshaled me in, and I opened the canopy and took off my bundle. And the guy who was marshaling me was an African American. He stared at me. It was like he was seeing a movie. <laughs> like a black man yeah. flying a jet fighter. So I took off my parachute, I left them, but his duty is to carry them. And I came down the steps. And even though I was walking to the officers' um, quarters, he turned looking at me. He couldn't believe <laughs> that an African flew that aircraft. Mm. So after a while, I went to the bar to buy a little uh, pizza. And I realized he wanted to talk to me. So I gave him the chance. And he came and said, son, where are you from? I said, from Ghana. So said, where, Ghana? <laughs> where, Ghana? I said, you mean Krumah's country? I said, yes. I said, my, oh, my. Where I come from, they wouldn't be allowed to touch an airplane. <laughs> And to, for you to fly it, you see the way it is. Like, even the Americans yeah, yeah. were marveled that we were flying. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's some of the duties we did. Wow. Yeah. So now you're in Ghana. Um, you say 65, right? Yeah, we'll continue our training. You take a you have a lot of training you do every time you go. Different out. modules, yeah. Yes, that you go and practice and come. You go and practice and come. But Until you one, one morning. We're working about 4.30 a.m. Which and year? 66. Mm -hmm. There's the day of Nkrumah's school. The coup against Nkrumah. And they will take him to the squadron and ask to pray to fly. Because there's a coup coming on. But so you knew that the coup was coming on? We were briefed when we went to this base. So our, our, our duty was to locate where they were. Locate and then and then finish them, drop bombs on them. So we flew for about an hour. We finally detected the soldiers around Dodoa Junction here. No, <laughs> sir, please <laughs> hang on. No, this is a story. Yeah. So, Air Force young boys, pilots, fighter pilots, you got wind of the coup to overthrow Nkrumah, and so intelligence briefed you. And your mission was to go search and destroy. Search and destroy. And how what what, what form would that take? Search and destroy. You search for the enemy and you destroy him. Mm-hmm. But Period. you had no clue where the enemy was. That's why we went to search. Okay. And we located them. You located them? Yes. And you destroyed them? No, we didn't have the power to destroy. We need instruction to destroy. So, so where did you start from? Uh, you know, we, f we knew there was somewhere around Accra. Okay. So we flew all over looking. I wouldn't see any strange movements of you know, this early morning between quarter to five, about five thirty, game six. It was now getting a bit light up. Then we detected them at the junction of Dodoa. You know, so we flew over them for a while and we realized that. These were the soldiers coming. There were not that many. Because in the coup, you don't need to move a whole battalion to go and do it. You go section, when you achieve your aim, 
then they come in. So after we reported that we seen them and they asked us to keep flying, we were waiting for the word that we should go action. In the meantime, we were running out of fuel. Mm. So when we realized that fuel was not enough, we decided to come back and land. And we landed and no instructions came again that they should be destroyed. So I believe the insurgents had a field day to move into Accra. And um, the word around was that the Ghanaian soldiers should not kill each other. We shouldn't fight each other because Nkrumah had his bodyguards at Shire Hills. And at the type of weaponry and vehicle they had, they could have moved down in Accra. And no one could have stopped them. Mm -hmm. But the fact that don't fight, Nkrumah was coming back. So everybody thought Kwame was coming back. If he came back, you could stop this thing happening. You mean after he was overthrown? Overthrown. So the feeling that the feeling he, that he was coming back. back. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Now as the day goes on, it became more difficult for him to have come to do anything. Yeah, but when, when you notice that they have succeeded uh, with the coup, um, did you guys regret not finishing them? To be honest, if we, if we knew the reasons behind this coup, as we've all gotten to know through the CIA, you know, uh, official, you documents, know, yes. yeah, documents which have come out, then I would have regretted I took part or maybe supported it going. Because I think that that had destroyed a part of growth of Ghana. You say you'd have regretted that I took part in it because we but didn't you, know. But did you take part in the coup? I didn't take part as a soldier. I was in the air with my fighter plane. To stop them? To stop them. And we didn't stop them. We didn't have instruction to stop them. So you mean you regret that you even allowed them to do what they did? Yes. At the hindsight, yeah. we had come back only about two, three months. And the things Ghanaians were complaining about, we didn't see it. I must be honest that there was no sugar, milk, the rest. It didn't affect me. I ate, went to the officer's mess, I ate. But now I think the whole country has gotten to know that it was CIA propaganda which instigated the coup against them. Mm -hmm. So hindsight, you should have finished them? We should have. After you sent us to a mission, search and destroy. You remember some search. of your colleagues in that mission? Yes, I did. Unfortunately, before six men, twelve, six of my colleagues have died. In what? Air crashes. If you're flying fighters, you must be ready at any time to die. Hang on. That's <laughs> How many were you then? We were 12 which went. For, on that mission? No, no, on that mission. No, I'm talking three, about the mission. Three. Three planes. Remember yes. them? Yes, I do. Who, who are they? Uh, I'm here. Captain Chapai is in. And I think Uredu is around. So all three are still alive. We'd like to speak with them. <laughs> They're alive. Nice. Okay, so you let them off. They succeeded with the coup and Nkrumah was kicked we, we out. Be, we became part of it because the military was ruling. We were still in the military. Okay, so and who was leading the coup again? General Ankara became head of the... <laughs> okay, so this has been footprint with um, Wing Commander Sobojo. We'll end here and then we'll have a second part where he talks about his life in the Air Force proper and how he interacted with the various military leaders until the Fourth Republic. Thanks for watching. My name is Samuel Atamensa.